description to the statements to follow um, and it's also the only place in the report where you can see comparative information. Two From years. 2016 to 2017. Right. Right. So under financial highlights, overall your net position, that's essentially your fund balances on a accrual basis, okay? Your net position as of June 30, 2017 uh, was $22,320,000. Uh, which is a decrease of 1.9, 931,000 uh, from the previous year. Um, and that last sentence under financial highlights, it, that decrease is explained. Uh, it's primarily due to the advanced funding of $2 million. Mm -hmm. All right. So then moving to page four, you're going to see a condensed statement in that position. And again, this is on a government-wide basis, so these are full accrual statements. 
Uh, the current assets, um, comparing to prior year, they're down about 1.2 million, uh, about 10 percent, mostly in the cash and investment uh, category. Uh, you've got some new line items, deferred outflows of resources, non-current liabilities, and deferred inflows of resources. Those are all IMRF related. Um, deferred outflows is an asset, and deferred inflows is a liability. Your net current liability or non-current liability is your net pension obligation. So that's essentially the unfunded portion of IMRF as of June 30, 2017. Um, so with the decrease in assets, you've got uh, a decrease in your total net position then again of the $1.9 million. So then looking at the condensed statement activities, the table in the bottom part of the page. Uh, property and replacement taxes, your levies <coughs> stayed the same, so there's very little change from 2016 to 2017. <coughs> and that is, just to be clear, the 2015 levy to the 2016 levy uh, is what funds those, those two years. And even with the decrease in cash and investments, you still had interest income increase, about 17000 So that's good, because that helped to fund the fact that you did not receive the per capita grant. I don't think anybody has received them yet, quite frankly. Everyone's received a letter, intention to pay. But, um, and fines and fees are actually up as well, 14000 So even with uh, no per capita grant funding coming in, uh, the increases from those other revenue sources were able to hold your revenues pretty steady from the previous year. Uh, and then looking at expenses, uh, personnel line items up about 2.4%. Uh, the biggest change, of course, is that employee fringe benefit line. Um, and that is a combination of your health insurance, your deferred count from prior year. It's a myriad of numbers um, in there. And uh, the IMRF portion uh, actually uh, represents about 2.5 million of that line with a net pension obligation when that gets recorded in the balance sheet as a liability, then it hits um, expense on the income statement. So that's why the IRF is equal to about 2.5. But so this includes the one-time payment on the It does. Right? It yes. includes that one-time payment. Yes, it does. Uh, so then total expenses overall are up about 2.6 million from the previous year. So that explains that decrease in that position, 1.9. Any questions on here before we move on? Okay, so looking at page 5, this is uh, the summary of changes in the fund balances for each of your funds, and this is all on a modified accrual basis. So these are looking at short-term uh, assets and liabilities. Uh, so the general fund, which is where that $2 million advance payment came out of, um, it decreased $871,000 during the year. Special Reserve has no funding coming in. There was no transfers into it this year, so that $103,000 decrease is strictly from spending uh, for fixed assets and, and the like. Uh, all these other uh, special revenue funds um, all have been spent down a little bit, and that I think is done intentionally to keep those fund balances uh, down to a reasonable level. And the building and site um, had a starting fund balance of 103000 and there was 214000 spent. So um, it resulted in then a fund deficit of 111000 uh, at June 30, 2017. And the deficit, it's anticipated, will be covered by future tax liability, as opposed to transfers from the general <coughs> fund. So I think in 2017, it's part of the levy. So is, is there any reason why we, I mean, is there any reason why, why we can't use transfers to pay that amount? No, there's no reason. Okay. Yeah, it comes from, it, it has to be funded either through the general right. fund or from tax levy. Okay. Yeah. Either one is proper. Um, and you're obviously within your, your general fund spending is within your appropriated. So everything's fine there. Okay, so then moving further back to page six, we start getting into um, a little more detail. 
Um, these are your major funds, your first two columns, and then all the other, what are not major funds, are grouped together in that third column. And it's mostly the special revenue funds. Um, so looking here, cash investments, um, it's down about 10%, 945000 from the previous year. Looking down about four lines, you see that 88826 under general fund. Uh, this is um, helping to, it's a receivable from the, uh, the building and site fund because you can't have a negative cash balance. So essentially, if you look under liabilities, under other funds, there's an equal and opposite, 88826 So it's, we call that in the government world, do to, do from. So uh, the do to, uh, do to is from, uh, in the general fund, and do, or, I'm sorry, do to is the liability, and that's the building the site. So essentially that will go away once it has cash in that fund. Um, but yeah, you just, you can't, can't uh, show cash as a negative amount. Um, any other questions on here? It's considered a deferred outflow. Okay, deferred outflow is uh, it, it's a result of um, the I, your IMRF pension plan and. It means that money has, has is in the plan and is yet to be spent out. So it's a de, it's a deferred. It's ultimately going to be an expense, but right now it's considered an asset. So there's a reason why it's this specific amount. Is that what yeah, it comes all out of the actuarial report, quite frankly. Which we haven't seen. Okay, all right. That's good to know. Maybe we can discuss this later. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Sure. Yeah, the actuarial um, numbers, the report was done as of 1231, it always is for IMRF. So these are 1231 numbers okay. that all relate to the IMRF. Thank you. Plan. Okay, then moving on to page 7. Um, looking under the general fund column. All the way to the bottom, you've got fund balance end of the year of six million five hundred fifty-two thousand. Mm -hmm. And I always like to look at this at, and try to determine um, how many months of expenditures are actually in that fund balance. Uh, how many months could you go without having any property tax money? And uh, as of uh, June 30, 2017, you have 10 months, 10 months of expenditures in your fund balance in the general fund. Uh, 2016, it was 17 months. So you're now under that year mark, which is fine. You know, it's, uh, there's no perfect number, quite frankly, as long as you're within a range, and that's fine. And the range is mm -hmm. usually? Uh, six, like six, six months, months to, to yeah, so. you really don't want to go over two years, I think, if you start running into tax objections, although mm -hmm. you're at higher risk for tax objections, so, okay. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, there's, again, there's no perfect, perfect answer there. Okay, so I'm going to have you move on to page 12. Um, can we start before we go to oh, page sure. 12? Oh, sure. Um, I noticed that you um, stated in one of your letters that there's a special note should be made about um, note 2, disclosures involving deposits and investment. Note 2 are sensitive because they're significant to the financial institutions. Can you explain that um, and why? That's where I was going to take you, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. That is no, that's good. Uh, yeah, page 12. Yeah, so the footnotes start on page 8. Um, it's all really good reading. I mean, it essentially explains every asset liability in your statement, if you have any questions on it. Uh, note 2 is deposits and investments. And this is, you know, this is very important. First of all, it's a very significant amount on your balance sheet, um, cash and investments. Uh, and it's important that... Um, Deposits are all collateralized, and they essentially are within 5209. Um, I'm sure that was taken care of right after year end, but uh, 
So most of your deposits are, uh, were collateralized throughout the year. Uh, the investments, I think this is good information, lets you know on a by investment type what the weighted maturity, uh, weighted average maturity in years is, and then your weighted average rate. So it kind of gives you a sense of, you know, the investments that you are in, and are we extended too far out? Are we not earning enough interest there? I think it's just really good information, along with the fair value information as well. So, yeah, the investments overall, I think, are down about 1.1 million from last year, again, to help fund IMRF. But the uh, rates, the negotiable certificates, were actually up a little bit, I think, uh, in both maturity and weighted average rate, probably went hand in hand, earn a little bit more if you extend out further. So these are all within the acceptable events? Oh, absolutely. That, uh, absolutely. It's all within your policy, and your policy is in accordance with the statute. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's something we, we always review. And, and I think you rewrote your investment policy like within the last three years mm -hmm. yeah, to handle, um, I think, longer term investments. Yeah. So. Yeah, we were. It was in conformance with the change in the law, wasn't it? That expand? I thought it well, expanded the, the types of investments we could make. So, uh, uh, it expanded the maturities. Oh. Uh, we were limited to a three year maturity, and uh, because it was you know, some rate advantages going up five years, we had made the change to five years, which was consistent with the, uh, uh, with the statute. Um, uh, and I think definitionally uh, there were a couple of change, minor changes you know, to define the types of investments that, uh, you know, that, the, uh, that the board can make. Um, and uh, so we did that, although we've stayed primarily in CDs, uh, sometimes we go into uh, agency bonds, you know, which would be Bonds issued from uh, the U.S. government, essentially, for you know certain of our agencies, and then uh, once or twice uh, we've gone into munis municipal bonds, uh, which were limited to only the very highest uh, quality municipal bonds. And I think right now uh, we have one bond <coughs> for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So. Any municipality around here? <coughs> um, I don't recall off the top of my head. Okay, well, I'd like you to turn to page 14. <coughs> uh, note 5, long-term liabilities. Uh, this has been expanded a little bit. Um, you had compensated absence. This is just your accrued vacation uh, that's owed out as of, the, as of June 30. Um, I, you've heard me refer to net pension obligation. That's your, again, unfunded liability with IMRF as of uh, 1231, actually. And then something we haven't talked about, other post-employment benefits. This is, uh, as part of IMRF, you, anyone that is a member of IMRF, any one of your employees, uh, once they retire, they, um, they have access to uh, join your uh, health insurance plan, essentially, if need be. Um, and so what this is, it's, a, it's other post-employment. So it's, it's post their employment, once they retire, if they choose, they can get their health insurance through the library. But they have to pay for it. They pay as they go. And it's, it's not cheap, I don't think. So a lot, a lot of people don't take advantage of it, but some people need to, and, and you may have that happen. As of June 30, 2017, no one had. Would that be similar to the rates that someone would pay if they, for instance, took advantage of COBRA? They have to pay the full amount mm -hmm. yeah, after correct. Having... Absolutely. Yeah, it's a good analogy. Um, and this represents, uh, it's an implicit liability, essentially. essentially um, I think because you look at demographics and things like that of uh, the people that would be potentially taking advantage of it, you don't know what that obligation or what that potential liability is. Um, again, this is an actuarial study that is done. 
Um, and right now that liability is at ten thousand six fifty. It's a again, it's a, it's a harder number to get your hands around than the attention obligation of, for IMRF. But it's I I like to explain it as um, it's it's potentially a liability that could be out there because you have a higher demo, uh, higher like. I hate to say this, older age demographic uh, that may be taking advantage of, of, of you know, part of your, being part of your plan and it may change rates down the line for you because you don't, um, your rates are not dependent on your age right now, you know, the older people are not paying higher rates than the younger people. So essentially that it can move your entire plan to be, you'd be paying for your premiums. But a ten thousand dollar liability, it's um, again it's actuarial actuarially come up and stuff. They have to make some assumptions and uh, they know the age group and their staff and that sort of thing. So it's just it comes part and parcel with IMRF is what happens. So that's what that's all about. Um, so note six is four pages of everything you ever wanted to know about IMRF. Truly is. It explains everything, you know, your tier one, your tier two benefits, all the actuarial assumptions that are used in the calculation, how they actually derive your net pension liability on page 17. It's all the, you know, the components that um, are factored into that number. And Um, so it's good. It may help you understand, you know, what an pension obligation is. Uh, reading through it. Um, note seven is um, on page eighteen, starting on page eighteen. That describes the other post-employment benefits that I just talked about with you on page nineteen. That top table shows uh, you'll always have to disclose active employees and retirees, and right now your retirees are zero. Okay, so change 27. Uh, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, so uh, yeah, when a uh, person mm -hmm. retires from IMRF, with IMRF, and they've had multiple employers, is it their last employer that's um, liable that, that shows their, their retirement? That's a, that's a really good question. You're right, because they could come from another plan right. or another employer, and they already have money in their account right. in the plan. Right. Um, so no, it's, I think it comes from two parts. I think it comes yeah. from two parts. It has to. Yeah. Uh, well, the way it was explained originally, yeah. Yeah. I also. work for two reciprocal bodies. MRF is a reciprocal one too, and they both pay a right. uh, percentage. Okay. Yeah, and Greg could probably explain that better than I just did. But when people, when you were calculating their past service credits, it went back as far as their employment with the library, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So they were only able to buy past service as far as the library was concerned. Right. And if they had worked. Uh, let's say for um, uh, the Park Ridge Library uh, also has IMRF. They had worked for Park Ridge up to, let's say, three years ago. Uh, we would only recognize them for three years of service, of which, you know, they could, you know, that they can go back mm -hmm. and buy. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Okay. Thanks. I, can I, can you uh -huh. clarify? I'm sorry. So you're saying if they work for the Park Ridge Library for three years, we would recognize those three years of service and they'd be able to buy them back? No, not quite. I said if they had worked for Park Ridge up to three years ago and had worked for us since, then they'd only have three years of service with us that they could go back and buy. Okay. Okay. Um, the, since I am, or since uh, Park Ridge has already, has already adopted IMRF and has been for a number of years, any experience that they have with Park Ridge would be in the Park Ridge account. Okay, so okay. is it correct to assume that if you work at another employer mm -hmm. and had a, they had IMRF, they don't buy that IMRF, those IMRF service hours, and then we fund it? Right. Okay, that's good to know. Right. 
So it's and, just and, and actually, if they're working for another IMRF employer, all of those hours have been accounted for already. No, but I meant like night. they left, they came here. You know how we buy back service hours? So you're saying they only buy back service hours for their employment within our library. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's... that's and it's only a fine adoption. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, have you turned to page 20? Looking at note 8, your deferred compensation, compensation plan. It still is there, it still exists. Uh, the last paragraph has been changed because uh, you contributed 7% of salaries up until August 1st. 2016. So now it's more of a just a, you know, it's a it's a volunteer contribution kind of plan. That they, can, they can put money in if they want. But you are, the library's contributions uh, stop as of August first. Then um, turn to page 22. Uh, the last two notes. Um, we're required to disclose and explain again the deficit fund balance, the building site fund. Um, and then note 14, just because it's significant, um, an event that happened after uh, the fiscal year end, but before we issued our report, um, the board committed to advance funding of 500000 to the IMF fund. And then turn to page 24. This is one of those new schedules. And I will point out one percentage number that I think is important down towards the bottom, uh, plan fiduciary net position as a percentage of the total pension liability. So this is how, how funded are you. And uh, the library is at 87%, which really is about the, about the average, quite frankly, overall as in the members that are all, the 3,500 members that are in IMRF. It averages out to anywhere between like an 80 to 80 percent, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. So you're right there. Um, and then page 28 is always interesting because it's uh, three years of property tax information. You've got your tax rates, your tax extensions, uh, then collections up through June. And then uncollected taxes, and that's what I want to draw your attention to. Um, I'm sorry, I lost what page you're on. Oh, I'm 20, sorry, 20, 20, 28. Okay. It's the last page, Tim. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks. Yes. I'm sorry, the last page. Thanks. It's easier to do it that way, you're right. Um, your uncollected taxes haven't changed too much in the last three years. Um, in 2015, you were at 3.7% uncollected. Uh, 2014 was the same, 2013 you were at 3.6. So it's holding its own, but uh, that's still, you know, it's a little higher than uh, what uh, the tax levy allows you to bump up your levy for loss and costs. Uh, the standard is about 3%, so you're running a little higher than that. Where, where do you see those percentages? Or I just did the math. Oh, oh, you did oh. okay. I did the math. The uncollected taxes of like under uh, 2015, can't look at 2016 because you haven't collected everything yet. Okay. But 2015, you haven't collected 259,000, mm -hmm. and just take that as a percentage of the tax extension. That's the amount that you anticipate collecting. I don't think this really is your expertise, but do you know why our taxes oh, are it's just, running it's higher no. uncollected? Than <laughs> it's it all depends on your your district and whoever's within your district. Um, it's tax objections, it's, I don't know. Some people don't pay. Well, so, I, I realize that. Just no, I mean, why, I mean they, they just don't it? pay, yeah. and, and it goes to, you yeah. know, it goes to a tax sale. Right. Um, you know, some people pay, and then they protest. You know, think right. of places like Coca-Cola and Best Buy. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then at some point, they get issued a refund um, uh, on the year. So, um, even though we collect taxes when they're paid, generally, like in February and August, uh, what happens is that uh, oh, a couple times a week I get a notice from the county that says we've issued refunds. Uh, to, you know, hotel appeals. Exactly. A number of different things. Yeah, there's, there's like 11 or 12 reasons, uh -huh. you know, on the notice. And... Um, 
I think it was today or yesterday, I got notified uh, by the county of refunds going back to 2010. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, at least it's not going back to 19-something. It's not going back to the 20th century. But, um, you know, but these things, you know, stay open for a very long time. And, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, right now I think we're in a deficit position with the county of, I don't know, somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand dollars. I wish I could remember it off the top of my head. That was just that from our levy amounts. So That's exactly sure. right. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, a few months ago, um, it was or maybe a couple months ago, it was like about forty thousand dollars. Since then, we've had collections come in, but they just do an offset. Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, we got down to zero for a while, and then we had you know more uh, refunds that were issued as a result of you know, various sections. Mm -hmm. Um, can I just talk about uh, the management letter? It's let's see, how many left? It's the one that has just five paragraphs, right? Mm -hmm. the this one. Yes, uh, this one. This one says <coughs> two. The other one, this one just says board. Right. So they have the difference. Board of trustees. Yeah. Uh, so the good news on page one is that there are no material weaknesses that we needed to communicate to you, the board, um, and no significant deficiencies either, which is sounds worse if it's actually a lesser degree of, of, uh, of an issue. Um, and the only, I mean, you haven't seen a management letter in a long time, probably, it's probably been three years. At least two. Seen, seen a letter mentioning deficiencies? Is that what you mean? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Right. Um, if there is nothing to communicate, then we do not put anything in a letter to say otherwise. Uh, the only thing that we had here uh, was that adjustment to the FICA tax, which um, is everybody aware? Yeah. yeah I, was, I was a little confused about how it, it didn't get noticed until now. I thought we paid FICA every quarter or something. Mm -hmm. And I, I would think the government would have noticed based on our salaries the error mm -hmm. before so much time passed. No, all your FICA that you been that has been collected from uh, your employees uh, paychecks are right. deducted mm -hmm. and then you match it with your employer. Right. They have all been submitted on a timely basis. Okay, I thought that's when the error would have been caught because it's a percentage based on salaries. Well, the error was found when we, we uh, as part of our audit, we always compare your payroll costs, your payroll level, mm -hmm. to your 941s. And then we look at all the deductions. There's oh, some sure. things that are pre-tax, pre-FICA, and, and we do a reconciliation. Saw. And so we saw this FICA, the FICA deductions were on the reconciliation. Right? And so we talked about it, and you know, I was surprised that um, first of all, your payroll company didn't pick up on it. Yes. Because you're not the only government client of theirs, I'm sure. And there was just some miscue, I think, with IMRF a little bit. So it's it okay. uh, it's getting rectified. It just sure. um, um, yeah. I mean, Susan and Greg got right on it and talked to PayPal and. So, um, so that's that. Um, and this other letter is just a letter of communications that is real standard protocol. We just need to let you know if there are any disagreements with management, any issues, any um, delays, anything that was, you know, caused a problem and nothing uh, needed to be communicated from that standpoint. Cool. So. Thank, thank you very much. Um, sure. I'd just like to ask if any of the board members have any questions. I have one question. I hope it's for Greg or for you. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed in the financial statements you're reminding us of the 500000 which we will be paying to IMRF. My concern is since we're aware of the fact that some of the employees could in the future purchase service hours, which would cost us definitely an increase in our IMRF contributions, 
do we need to be prepared in advance, or is that considered a liability now, or no? Because if, it's just, if it happens, it happens. Okay. It, and they will only do the calculation at the event, at 1231. And that's why you put your $2 million in April 1231. It's okay. a very strategic move on your part. Um, but yeah, the, the calculation won't be done until 1231. So any anybody that does buy back any service credits prior to that, that will get worked into the calculation. And yeah, it could change your numbers a little bit, but we don't, we're not obligated no, to you be are prepared not. ahead of time. Okay. Okay. It's referred to as a contingent liability. Mm -hmm. so, okay. so very often you have uh, something out there which may turn into a real liability in the future, but it's contingent upon you know, some okay. action or something. In this, in this case, the action is that the employee must decide to that they want to buy either the rest of their past service or mm -hmm. some other portion of their past service that hasn't been purchased already, at which point they'll issue a check. And then we'll, we'll, you know, we'll account for that liability, as we said, when we do the valuation at 1231. Okay, thanks. But we've had nobody, uh, to my knowledge, we've had no transactions along those lines since the initial flurry of transactions prior to December 31st, uh, 2016. Yeah, well, there's incentive for them to do yes, it quickly. Because, so. Yeah, because, as we discussed, mm -hmm. every year that they wait, the price goes up 7.5%. Because that's you know that's the way that IMRF views the world. It's a it's a world in which the returns are seven and a half percent, and the cost of financing is seven and a half percent. So that increases year over year. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions for our, our auditor? All good questions. Those are great. Thank you again. <laughs> All right. Um, having heard no other questions, uh, I'd just like to thank you uh, very much Lee, for uh, your presentation this evening and for your report uh, again. My pleasure. Um, we have one more thing we owe you is that annual financial report. So now that everything's yeah. final, we can uh, finish that up. And, um, you file that with the state? Uh, yes. We'll send you a package and then thank you. file. Great. Thank you. for the 2017-18 budget. I think we meant to say the 2018-19 budget because it'll be next year's budget. Oh, uh, I see. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, right. right. Uh, well, uh, do the movement and the second <coughs> uh, change to the minutes to refer to it. And that is the 17-18 budget, which we already passed. That is the 18-19 budget. That would be on page 8. Hey, is that okay you? You accept that change? Oh, I'm sorry. Fine. Oh, okay. All right, fine. I'm so, sorry. I'm looking. Okay. I don't know what the heck I'm looking at. That's page eight. Yeah. Oh, it's here. It's here. Here. You know what it is? I've got page seven and no, it's in the it's in this one. It's, I yeah, thought it, it was the in amended one. minutes were only page this seven. Just the one page. One one yeah, yeah, sorry if I was confused. Okay, okay. that's yeah. where my confusion was. Sorry. I thought it was we were given the whole thing. Yeah, okay. right. it's not just down to it. Okay. All right, so um, let's move into.
in the second term, he have accepted that uh, from the amendment. So I would like a roll call on the amended motion to approve the revised minutes. Did you take that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Uh, Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. So we um, now move to that section of our agenda, which uh, is for public comment. And we do have a couple of requests to address the board. Uh, the first one is Mr. Joe McCullough. Uh, would you like to step up, Mr. McCullough? And, uh, what, I wanna, what I want to talk about is uh, when patrons don't return their borrowings on time, the library personnel are renewing they're borrowing. And that results in a second borrowing. And it screws up the numbers. So we're getting what you call, they're talking about false, you know, fake news. We're getting fake numbers. And they could be substantial. Because I, in my opinion, I, I, I very often don't return a book. I'll be a late day or two late or something, or I'll take out three or four and then just return two or something, you know, and forget the other, the other one or you haven't finished them. But I think at least 5% of the people are, are late in returning stuff. And this, the library personnel should not be making that decision. It looks like when the numbers come up that people are reading more books and taking out more videos than they're actually doing. So I think we, we need to stop this practice. So, uh, Ms. Merkula, uh, just to clarify, uh, we have sort of a computer program now that sends out uh, automatic emails to individuals who have renewed a book, and when it gets close to the date uh, when it's due, if there's not a hold on that book, it automatically renews the book for you. Now, I, I appreciate that. Well, that, that's that means screwing I don't, up the numbers. Well, I, I think some patrons appreciate it because it saves me the it's trouble. It's for the patrons. Okay, may, if you just let me say, because what it allows me and other patrons like me to do is to see that it's renewed without me having to go back to the website right. and renew it again myself. So it just saves me a little work uh, right. to do that. So it's it's a service that the library provides. And I return the book as soon as I am done with it. But the numbers aren't adjusted. It looks like another rental, or not rental, but a borrowing. Well, I guess it is. I mean, I am not borrowing really. it for another three weeks. But you were just basically late, is what, what the circumstances Well, are. I renewed it. I mean, which the people could do... It's not showing as if you read an additional book or anything. It's just that if you were a slowpoke, and it took you four okay. weeks to do something. I was slowpoke. Okay, that happens sometimes, I admit. Right? I, you're right. Okay, I'm so I'm slowpoke. If, if you go with... It looks like this started in about 2015. I, I, I got the numbers from the annual reports here. It started in May 2016. In 2016. Well, we had an awful big, we had a spike here of uh, rentals, or uh, rentals, borrowings in 2015. We held the same number in 2014, but it seems like we've been going down like about an average of about 5% a year. So we're under construction. Pardon? We were under is that the reason that the numbers are down? Mm -hmm. okay. The other reason, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, videos. And um, I'm looking at this here. Your, your borrowings, with, with your numbers, you borrowed 1,045,000 pieces. Your budget is $7 million. Every piece you borrowed cost you $6.70. Okay? Now, on videos, that, that model you're using is dead. I mean, it was Blockbuster and, and Hollywood Video. Right now, everybody's getting their, their videos on Netflix, $9.95 a month, unlimited, Hulu, $8.95, Amazon Prime, $8.50 with benefits, Redbox, you can go and put a dollar and get a video, and the Niles Library is roughly about $7. You're, you're way out of, I mean, maybe you should just get out of the business. That's it. Okay. The taxpayers are paying that at, you know, 671. 
Um, okay. Um, our next speaker is Mr. Stephen Yassel. Okay, would you like to step up, sir? Uh, my name is Stephen Yassel. Um, I didn't want to think back on what Joe just said. Uh, the media industry in general is changing. And I wouldn't be surprised if I see these multiplexes go uh, empty like a lot of these <coughs> mini malls that we have. Anyways, um, I wanted to be here today because uh, I went to the Friends of the Library meeting, a nonprofit meeting, a public meeting. Um, I learned there that uh, they have not gotten any funds given to them for the past 28 months. I think that's a big deal. And I did look into um, why that was. I know the board or the library in general wanted to hold on to the money. Um, but I heard that because of that, it got taxed. And now that if the friends of the library want it back, that it needs to be taxed again on them. So uh, I hope it gets fig figured out and resolved. I, I'm sure it will. But I really. I really think there should be a little more communication between friends of the library and the board. And I'm not laying blame on anybody. I'm sure this went over a lot of people's heads, but uh, I'm just bringing it to attention today. And looking in this packet here, I use LinkedIn as a video social networking tool. I'm a filmmaker. I, I really don't know why we're spending $140,000 on LinkedIn accounts. I, I looked at the LinkedIn app. I pulled up Niles Public Library. There's 68 employees on there. There's 114 people that follow the Niles Library. It says that there's 58,000 people that the library serves. So why are the numbers so low? If it's 114 people that follow you on LinkedIn, 68 employees, but 58,000 people that we're serving for Niles Township and Maine Township. Why are we spending so much money? $140,000 on LinkedIn. We're, we're spending $14,000 to LinkedIn for Lynda.com. For the service of Lynda.com. Right. So it's a money total for LinkedIn Corporation, $173,236.88. Sense. That is. Can you tell me what you're looking at? Because I'm here. It was a bank register report, page 16 in the packet. I just saw that number and I'm floored. I just don't know what that is or what that's going to say. And one more comment. Sorry, guys. But I got to say this. Income okay. library okay, so, uh, let me just, I, don't, I just want to clear this up while we're here. We yeah. paid $13,000 to LinkedIn for Linda.com. And the running total of all of the bills is $173,000. Yeah, so it's, it's a running so total what, of all of the bills. So what's Linda.com? Linda.com, oh really? I think actually it would be super helpful to you in, in the work that you do. It's um, yeah. training videos on how to do, you know, Photoshop or... Hey, um, it's like 20 minutes. I'll do it for 1% of, of what you're paying right now. I'll do it for free. No, 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 no. There's but the difference is... Even there's tons of videos on this. You, you can learn it. It's wonderful. Check it out. I will. But, but it's not for uh, me. So, so as a Niles Public Library card holder, you can you can go to Linda.com okay. and uh, use that service. Correct. There's also YouTube. I, I made a joke the other day. YouTube should open up a university because <laughs> everybody's kind of learning their stuff on the internet these days. There's also half price books. There's a lot of pawn shops. There's plenty of places to get used books. DVDs, audio, any any form of entertainment. There's other places that we can get these used books if this is what we're buying. If we're buying a lot of new books, I think we should try to aim and cut down on buying so many new books. And if we're running through books so quickly that they're being used and they're falling apart, I mean, that's something that happens. But I... The, the bill for Ingram Library Service is sixteen thousand four hundred and three and twenty four cents. It's a lot of money. I mean, I, I got an Amazon wish list of like hundreds of books. It runs like eight thousand dollars. 
I don't know like how many books we'll bring into the library per year. I'd like to see the numbers. It's not really a big deal. But I wanted to voice my opinion on it. And um, this is just for me finding this tonight. But I do want to see a little more uh, cooperation, communication with the friends of the library because I think they've already contributed a lot to the library. The, uh, the statue downstairs was donated by them. And um, it's just, we need to be um, a better team. That's all I want to say. Thank you. So just uh, in, in response to your first comment, uh, about the friends, uh, they they actually should have been paying tax on that money all along, but neglected to do so. Uh, after taking that money in for years, we uh, kept the money uh, starting a couple of years ago because the friends themselves were not actually earning that money, uh, and therefore we retained it. And we began the practice of paying taxes on it. It, it should have been. Yeah, I mean, along. I I don't know the history of the the friends of life. I don't know what activity they've had going back to the 90s or when they were found. But I do want to see better cooperation. I'm, and they, and they have I'm going to all these different meetings in the village and the township and the county. Yeah. And you know they have an open invitation to what that many are working. Yes. And notice that I'm hearing about these meetings. But okay. I do, right. I'm here to support the board in helping make the best decision for the library. That's all I want. I want to be able to see uh, a lot more nonfiction books and maybe a bigger nonfiction section because we're in a lot of trouble possibly losing our history and getting it rewritten. It's a real problem and it's happening right now. I feel like going to Cook County and telling them to remove all the monuments in Chicago and give them to all the museums until everybody calms down. Because this is just okay. getting ridiculous. Okay. But anyways, concerning the library, I do want I do appreciate the work that you've all done and I do want to see other team work them up. Thank so. you. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thanks. So. All right. Um, we that's the end of the individuals. Look. There's only two people that have asked to speak, so we now move on to the treasurer's report. Uh, and uh, Tim, I'm going to uh, turn to you. Do you have a report for us? Uh, yes, you've all been given a package in that report for the month. Uh, October uh, is the fourth month of our fiscal year, so we're looking at uh, about 33.33% of the way through our budget. That's kind of our benchmark for each of the line items. Uh, I have to say, on uh, just right off the bat, it's a really boring uh, um, financial report because we it, it's everything's looking very well. A lot of things are uh, under budget or on budget, and uh, really not much to uh, focus on. Do you want to point out on page nine of our financial report? Yes, <laughs> right. I don't know if we page nine. Uh, the, re the income statement, uh, revenue. And I guess page 10 now um, in my jacket. Anyway, uh, I chose a, a negative amount for the month accrual and the month variance. That is due to the payment of the back taxes for the continuous book sale. That, that reflects that. It's on page 10 of our jacket. Okay. Um, and then again, page 11, material, library materials, December of last month. Uh, it should even out, downloadables, periodicals should even out by the end of the year. Um, yearly payments for online databases kind of skew the uh, figures for the month, or uh, month by year to date. Um, the programming for adults is over budget. Uh, and the library operating expenses, again, the overall category is under budget, so we're looking really well there. And basically, the rest of the pages, uh, categories are under budget, and uh, we're looking pretty good. Okay, does anyone have any questions on the Treasurer's Report? Question. Okay, if there's no comments, we'll move on to the Treasurer's Report. Um, and I will now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $284,706.90, payroll expenses of $302,862.81, and special reserve expenses 
of $5,222.82 for a total monthly expense of $592,792.53. So we have such a motion. Patty, thank you very much. Second. Okay, so thank you much. All right. Any uh, questions or comments on the motion on the table? Well, I have a question on the payment of bills in general. Uh, last month, we had a couple of trustees who voted against paying our bills. So, what would happen if all of the board members voted against paying our bills? Well, we'd be in the poll. And then what would happen? Um, uh, two, a couple things would happen. I, mean, I think in the short term, what would happen is that uh, our vendors would stop supplying uh, products to us. Um, and in the longer term, uh, we would uh, uh, have trouble engaging new vendors uh, as it became apparent that we weren't paying our bills. And then beyond that, uh, we'd probably uh, have some series of suits, depending on the amount that were outstanding, to, uh, to collect. It would go into some sort of collection cycle, which may end up in the courts or may not. Oh, and, oh, and payroll as well, yeah. Well. yeah. And payroll as well. Payroll. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we lose all our employees yeah. because yeah. payroll is part of this. That's a very good point. <laughs> well, actually, the reason I choose to vote no is because I did not approve the budget, which did not have a process at all to it. So if I can't approve that we frivolously came up with a $7 million budget, I can't approve the monthly expenses of that $7 million budget. And if for some reason the majority of the board refused to pay these bills, we'd have to figure out what to do. And that would certainly be scrutinizing and reviewing our expenses. But I'm sure you're safe because five of you will always approve them. But that's why I vote no. I can't approve spending of a budget I disagreed with. However, but when, you're, for when you're out. on board, and a vote is made, then you act as the board's decision as a trustee according to the Illinois Public Library Trustee Manual. I am a trustee, so and in that my opinion, how you shouldn't be wasting this money. So I choose to vote Wasting no. your money to pay the payroll. Creating a budget numbers. without utilizing any type of checks and balances. Ben, ben, I, I, I just wanted to find out what oh, no, you're fine. consequences would be if time. we all ended up voting against the budget. Well, well you would probably generally... review it yeah. before you'd let that happen, well, which would be a wise choice. Which we did line by line. No, that's not reviewing a budget. But, I, I, I don't or creating a argument. budget. I just wanted to, I had a question, I got the answer. So, uh, Thank you for that, Tim. Okay. All right. So, any other questions? All right. Uh, Dr. Roll call then. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. All right, fine. We'll move on to the director's report now. Um, Susan? Okay. I just got a few things. Um, I mentioned that in the last few weeks we have had three major events, all of which uh, were fantastic and I'm super proud of them. One is in the director's report. It's the volunteer luncheon. Um, Cindy and a group of the supervisors worked on it together to thank the adult supervisors, the kid, super, the kid um, volunteers get their own party at the end of summer reading. But this, so this is for the adult volunteers that work all year. And they, um, you'll see the pictures in there. And then Cindy also wrote some background about the sorts of work that the volunteers do, the number of hours that they put in, which is really quite remarkable, and, um, and how much the amount of work that they put in is worth. So, um, and then she also got some statistics here on where this, the volunteers came from, which I thought was very interesting. I, I just wanted to interject. I thought that was really astounding how many people volunteer for our district who do not live in our district. 41% yeah. of the volunteers don't even live here and volunteer for our district. I think this must be a great place to volunteer. Awesome. That's the only thing I can <laughs> think. Yes, uh, we must be very appreciative and treat them right and give them interesting jobs to do. I'm not really sure. But I, I think that's something to be really proud of. And I also think that we have to keep that in mind when sometimes we get complaints about other people are using our library who don't live in our district. Well, yeah, but we're you know we're getting some some great help from people who live in the surrounding communities who are devo devoting their uh, free time to our library. And uh, I was just grat very gratified to see these people coming in 
in volunteering for our library. So um, I'm glad to treat them well and uh, give them this uh, uh, nice little recognition. So they really appreciate being able to use the library and this is a way they can give back. And then the uh, next fantastic event was the Veterans History Breakfast, which is always so touching and wonderful. And um, you'll hear more about that one in next month's uh, director report. And then finally, just this last Saturday, there was Maker Fest, which was a fantastic right. success. So it was just really amazing. And I just have to say, I have the best staff. They are just doing such a wonderful job with all the things they're putting together. Um, and I understand part of the Veterans Project is to actually record some of these yes. veterans. Is that yes. right? I mean, it's sort of a library. Yeah, it's literally outside this window here, and that's where the recordings are. They and on the library. Okay, library. so we, we have a collection of recordings, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think it would be really fascinating for the board to maybe, maybe hear some clips oh, sure. from those that at some point idea. in time. Um, you know, I think uh, many of us may have been recently watching the Ken Burns' uh, documentary uh, about the Vietnam War. Maybe you have some clips from Vietnam veterans. Uh, I don't know, or I'm certainly he's, he's still working on uh, World War II veterans. Oh, he's right, right. trying to capture well, them okay. before that makes they sense. away. It does make sense and to then the old ones first. Okay, fine. Right. He does have, um, I think, one or two Vietnam veterans. But, um, you know, uh, I would really be interested to perhaps see some of the more interesting clips that you might have yeah. if that ever becomes a, something yeah. that could be done. And also the... Um, the Veterans History Breakfast, they always have all the vets sit up on the stage at the beginning of it, and they do what they call a roll call, and they pass the mic from person to person, and they each say, you know, I served in this place, and, and they have interesting little stories that they tell, and that actually was all video recorded, so that is on our website if you want to take a look at that. It's really very touching okay. to see. You know, sadly, they are, there are fewer of them every year, but, um, but yeah, it's a wonderful event. Neil O'Shea, of course, has done that for many years now. And, um, and then I just wanted to mention that, you know, we got to host a author party for the um, release of a new book. A couple of authors came, and some people got to meet authors in person, and they picked our library to be the place to release their books, so that was kind of an honor. And then last but not least, we have a battle of the books getting started once again this year, and that's what's going on tonight. We should come in. Um, further on in the report, I just wanted to... We were able to park, though. Well, a lot of times we're not able to park on those days. Yeah, I know. It, it is a challenge to get everybody in. But yeah, that was good on Wednesday nights for as long as I've worked here, which, by the way, as of last week, is 20 years. But that has just been on Wednesday nights that whole time, so it's probably not going to change. There are parking spots still in the back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, as you can see, Greg put a little report in about the sales tax with the friends and reported on what we ended up paying. We are still waiting to hear if we owe penalties and interest on that. Um, wanted to remind you once again that the Public Library Association Conference is coming up in March in Philadelphia, so you do need to think about whether you would like to attend that or not. It is, um, it's, since it's all public libraries, it's very intensive. You really learn a lot at it. Um, so last time I talked about the per capita grant, and I told you that you were going to have some homework. Um, I gave you part of your homework tonight, so you've got this book at your place, the Trustee Facts File. And um, you are supposed to read the first five chapters of that, um, and so just let me know when you have there. And is this like a survey that you then have to fill out? Or to, I, I to complete the, the per grant form? Yeah, to complete the per capita grant form, I have to say the trustees. You have to these. verify that we read this. Yes, but I'm not going to stand over your shoulder while you do it. So. Okay. All right. um, and then I also just this morning watched a, yeah, I remember I said that you had to watch a webinar or some online resource about safety in the library. And there was a presentation this morning um, that I watched. It was really very interesting. It was called... Trends in Safety and Security in Libraries. It lasts just under an hour, and I just got the link this afternoon, so I will be sending that out to you, and you can watch that at your, at your convenience. He talks at lightning speed. That was the only bad part. Is like trying to take notes. You can watch it for sure yourself. Watch, so you need to watch, yes. So you can fill out the form. Yeah, yeah. Yes. well, I mean, it's also... Should um, you send us a link on it? Yeah, you send me the link. Right. And, you know, when the webinars, you can do other things at the same time. I have to say, oh, you covered an hour. Yeah. 
it's quite interesting, actually. I think you'll be interested to hear what sorts of things are <laughs> <laughs> the libraries. <laughs> you talked about the opioid crisis and things like that, and library staff being trained to use Narcan. And so it's stuff that you guys do need to be aware of and thinking about in the context of our library. Um, so it was interesting. A question again, it was the first five chapters. Yes, so that's until through page 26. Easy peasy. Thank you. Thank you. It should, it should not be too hard. And then also, it's just a good resource for you. If you want to your copies, have the trusty line of the dungeons. Um, and the last thing, another thing is not that pleasant, but I just wanted to point out that Mr. McCoolis' boys are killing me. Uh, we got, you know, five of them at once. Uh, they ended up being literally this much paper that had to be found from files and copied. This much paper. It's craziness. And it took a great deal of staff time because the net was cast so broadly that everybody that goes to a school had to search through their emails, find anything that had school in it, eliminate the ones that were not related to visiting a school. Then I had to go through everything and redact any teacher card information and phone numbers and things like that. It, it took a lot of time. And frankly, not for a lot of bang for that buck. It's a bunch of emails of saying, is 2.30 OK? No, 2.45 would be better. It just, it's a great deal of time. And it, it, it's frustrating to me. And okay, they just wanted you all to be aware of okay, that. If I can just ask you a question. So um, I understand that the uh, Freedom of Information Act sure. can charge for the copies themselves. But that's just for the pieces of paper, is right. that right? And what do we charge for each piece of paper? Uh, they get the, you know, the first 50 copies free. free, so he's gotten a lot of free copies, and then it is 15 cents a page after that. Okay, but we cannot charge for uh, time spent to fulfill FOIA requests, is that right? That's correct. Have you uh, any uh, estimates as to how much uh, I, I, I do, staff actually. time I kept track of this? it because I was so frustrated, and it added up to a total of $831. That's excluding more casual conversations with Greg and Cindy about how to approach this. This is just the time it's spent to physically handle all this. Material. Or maybe we should hire somebody. Thank you for all of that. Another person on the staff. Can I ask a question? Well, I, mean, it, I, I just want to respond to you. That, that really should, you know, it shouldn't take time out of your staff. But yet, yeah, hiring someone that that costs money too, obviously. Yeah, and I'm just being facetious. Okay, all right. right. That is just. Is there any way? What is the purpose of this? What to what end will all of this? What's the goal in mind? Can I ask one question? What was the question he asked that generated it? Do you see them in page three? No, but there were several. So is that just all of the no, requests, that is, or is that one? This one is the request for the legal bills. This one is the request for the Ippler reports, and the rest of these are the uh, visits to schools. Okay, so he asked, I, I think I think what the confusion is, is I'm trying to ascertain what he asked based on what you give him. He asked one, what, library staff go to schools? Is that what the request well, was? Well, you've got a list there. here. It's, 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 uh, it's listed right here on page 37. Okay, I don't, I, my question is, when everybody goes to a school and, and they participate, is this not recorded somewhere? Records we have to go emails. through. We ask for records and emails pertaining to library personnel visiting and working at schools from January 2nd, 2017 through October 15th, 2017. So we don't, so, so there is a question. I'm here. I can be a witness. I originally oh. asked you know, how many, actually, how many yeah, trips were made, and I was refused to answer. You're not part of the discussion. It, here. Yeah, the public uh, comment is over. I, I think what we, we want to uh, Can I please right now get my is, question out, please? Okay, just so we finish my sentences, uh, the cost of this, uh, fulfilling this request. Now, Carolyn, what is your question? Okay, my concern is, I'm not sure his question and the, the information that's necessary to answer his question is, is being handled correctly. I am amazed. Please let me finish. Okay. For the two requests I made for information, I, had, I asked for seven documents. And it all had to do with consultants. Three were bills from the previous year. Four were for proposals for the upcoming year. I was told it took this library four hours to produce those documents. 
Now, I have to tell you, there obviously is a problem with the way we either group our information, store it. I mean, this continuous copying of paper. Don't we use technology for any of this? School visits, anything we do to participate in the school should be something already part of, of a cost or, or part of your programming. Why do we have to fish for this yeah, number? It's, it's the type of information you have to look for because... No, I'm I, saying if I had staff, staff, yeah. staff, yeah. staff, yeah. 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 staff yeah. that repeatedly went to school, no. I would want all of that information. No, no, no. I, I'm sure there's some information uh, regarding schools that together, but when you get an email request like this, all records and emails, that means every person who does anything to do with schools has to search through their email. And I have to do this. This takes a long time. You have to search through all those emails. You get all kinds of things come up. Then you have to pull them out. You have to photocopy them. It takes forever. Um, because uh, it, it, it's requests like this are just very broad, and it's very time consuming to go through them. So, um, well, you know, actually, my concern is why is this going on? And to what purpose? I mean, are we trying to make the, the staff understand that they're not doing their work? Is that what the person is trying to say? Um, I, I don't know. You know, to it what end? It's accessible. not, uh, it, he's certainly not um, helping. It's costing. It's he's not fiscal. It's costing us time and energy, staff time. The loan taxpayers' money. Taxpayers' money is being spent for no reason at all. Yes, we have records. They're right there, a stack of them. Understand, we understand about freedom of information, and information has to be provided. But there has to be a limit. Well, actually, it's a very good purpose and an understanding of the purpose, I believe. There should be there has purpose to, with it. Yes. Right. Well, I have two more of them on my desk now. I'll get rid of those, and hopefully that will be it. But again, Mr. Wakul, I encourage you to call me on the phone. I'm happy to answer your questions. I sent that email in because I didn't get an answer when I asked. You said there was no records of how many visits were made to schools, so I asked for the emails. You refused the first one three months ago. Because there wasn't a record. That's a very simple one. All right, the last thing I wanted to cover is you had asked for an update on the strategic plan. So here is a strategic plan for the quarter update. Well, so this is a quarterly update. Quarterly update. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to very quickly run through it. You can read it in more detail yourself. If you'll recall, the uh, strategic plan is laid out into four focuses. The first focus is exceptional customer service. And then under that, there are investments that we have decided to make. And investment number one is that was a, a pretty important one was upgrading, upgrade wayfinding and navigation throughout the physical space. So the things we have done for that are um, we have formed a committee that is looking at the best way to add signage to the interior of the library so that all of our rooms are marked pro appropriately. Um, we have begun an experiment with putting a staff member or a volunteer at the front of the library during peak times, and we also have done an analysis to see what the peak times are. Just so if somebody's coming through the door and they don't immediately know where to go, it gets them on so their way. So where is that person? Where would that person be? They were just right inside the second set of doors. I mean, standing and there? Or? Standing, yeah, standing there and, and saying hello, and they had a clipboard, and they said that they were writing down, you know, the sorts of questions that they were getting or what kind of interactions they were having. Okay. So it's an experiment. We're trying it. Uh, second investment, improve internal and customer-facing processes, improving efficiency and ease of customer service interactions. And this is all the things that we're doing with our Polaris migration, which is going to get us a catalog that will work much more easily for, uh, for patrons and that we're trying to get everything set up in a way that all of the uh, processes will be very streamlined. It's a huge, huge project. I can't really even say how much work this project is, but it will all be worth it in the end. And in any case, we have no choice. We don't get a vote. And uh, by the way, one of the things that is with the new Polaris is automatic renewals. We don't have any choice with that either. Um, let's see. Uh, we've had to develop consistent standards for customer service. We, I have developed a who answers what where directory so that in both directions, so that it says uh, everybody at each staff, at each desk, all the things they are expected to know how to do at that desk. 
and then if there's a reverse part of it, which is if somebody calls wanting a museum adventure pass, where do they go to get that? So I'm trying to get the people to the right place a little bit faster and more efficiently. Uh, we have been working on cross-training staff to be on the different desks. We are getting ready to launch Communico in December. So that, the next one of the phases of that, we'll be working on a staff intranet once we get the first part of it up and running. Focus two, expanded community engagement. Uh, investment was to develop a task force to gather information and explore options for expanded service in the northwest part of the district. We've started, we found that all of our data was kind of scattered to the four winds. So Cindy has begun pulling all of that into one place so that we can look at it more effectively. We are working on the CMAP data that they have come up with in an unincorporated main township. Um, and then a couple of the supervisors are working on looking at the bus routes and see, seeing how they can get people to the, to the library. If there's like a way you can get from here to there using the free bus and other buses. They actually spent quite a bit of time riding the bus last week, which was also a good experience just to get a more physical idea of what the village and the district really are. So we're working on that. So is, uh, there's two free buses, one of them stops here, is that right? Yes. Are there two routes, but just one route stops here, is that right? We we rode northbound and southbound because, for example, um, taking the bus from the library to, let's say, drop, getting to uh, Notre Dame was probably like in 40 to 50 minutes, whereas the bus route uh, going south, yeah. So, um, we were on the bus as all the boys were coming across. They all got on the bus with us, and we were at the library within seven minutes. And so that was a that was a great level because right away I thought, ah, team programming. We need to promote things that are happening at the library as that bus is arriving and market directly to that group of boys. So it was it was very important. Yeah. So we're, with, then, then the end goal with that would be to have information to pass out to the patrons, explaining to them, you know, if you live over here, you can get this bus to get to Golf Mill, to get on the free bus, to get to the library. So figuring out other ways to get people here to our building. Susan, can I just make a, or throw something in? Once they determine what, where these buses go, and they'll probably figure out where maybe there, there are some lulls or there, there are blocks where people are being overlooked, maybe contacting the village to get a complete um, record of what these bus routes actually entail and then asking them if they could modify the bus routes to accommodate any of the shortcomings that they see and they should want to work with us. Yeah. And then of course spread attention. all this information to everyone. Sure. I would that. definitely try that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, investment, explore community partnerships, and establish the library as a central hub of information for the community. We have staff participating at village chamber, school district, committees, commissions, all sorts of things, making connections all over the place. Uh, focus three, focus staff development. Train staff to develop and rely on data and analysis in evaluating success of collection services and programs. Um, I have developed a program management team who is looking at PLA's project outcome, which is a way of gathering data about your programs to see if we want to implement it here or if we want to develop our own version of it. Uh, the senior management team, which is me, Greg, and Cindy, is working on developing visually simplified key statistics to send to staff so that they're more aware of uh, how things are going, rather than tackling the five-page dense statistics that you guys get. The investment of increasing the staff's awareness and understanding of cultural differences, developing tools and techniques for patrons of specific cultures. Uh, the passport training is now uh, finished, and that was part of that, and we'll be continuing that as part of their training to be working with all these different people. And we have contacted a speaker that Carolyn recommended on diversity awareness for our staff in service. I've not heard back from her. I understand that she is super, super busy, but she's I'm interested, though, at least. That's okay. what she said last Good. Okay. And then we are working on our, the rest of our staff in service preparation as well. And the final four focus is enhanced community awareness and alignment. And uh, the first investment, the formal marketing steering committee, has already happened. Uh, the second one, finalized the library name change and related branding. A great deal of that has already happened. Uh, I know that for years there are going to be things that pop up that say Niles Public Library. Mm -hmm. But you know, we've changed it in, a, I think, every place we could possibly think of to change it so far. 
And then the signage project is underway. Um, the corner sign should be done pretty soon. The sign on the building, the old building at Civic Center should be done soon. We think the driveway signs may end up having to wait for spring uh, because of concrete and digging and all those things. Uh, and then the last thing is the, an investment to evaluate the intent, scope, and content of the print newsletter, which is chapter one. And we have done these things that we said we were going to do, that collecting newsletters and from other libraries and comparing our content number, pages, publishing schedule, and quality. We've analyzed the quant content of the last two years of chapter one. We have begun designing user experience testing of chapter one to see if people are able to find what they need looking at it. And then the next step is Sasha is going to be uh, talking with the post office and looking at different options for delivery. So that is what we've managed to get done in the first quarter. Wow. So this will be uh, July through September 2017. Uh, well, oh, we didn't did vote on it until the end of July, so I was counting through October. Okay. So, yeah, we're, we're a little behind, I would say. But uh, okay, so we should expect uh, another report in February? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can have them more often if you want. Um, whatever you I don't know. I'm okay with quartering. Uh, anyone? Uh, no, I think people? this is a lot of work. I okay. Okay. We we Unless, work. obviously, there's some major. Yeah, major. right. We like to stay in touch with what's going on. But, sure. but right. you know, we don't need to hear it, I guess, every single Okay. Long. Well, some of the information ends up in the director's report. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. And Great. that is my director's report. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, communications, we have those. Um, we sign reports. Or we we don't have anything from the French Library, do we? Oh yes, we had a meeting. Okay, um, that was yesterday or two days ago. Monday, yes. Um, and actually, it was to discuss the um, the taxes that um, the library had to pay. Chris Hanusiak sent out an email to um, the Friends of the Library with all the attachments, and um, he discussed it in detail at the meeting. Um, uh, Rich explained the um, tax structure and how it varies because taxes change, and, and ultimately what the cost was to the library to pay for, um, I, I forgot how much, 20-some thousand was it? Um, I may be incorrect, but it listed all the taxes that are due. I believe the purpose of the meeting, at least at the end, uh, it was um, stated that um, Chris wanted everyone at the meeting to see this information so they can review it and figure out what their next steps would be. He said, he did make a statement that um, there are different ways of looking at this tax liability and he would like to look into it further. So it is going to be discussed at the next uh, Friends meeting, which is in January. Okay. All right. And that was, and then I left. Okay. All right. There was one other thing, though, at the, at the meeting. They did speak about looking into the possibility of trying to have the library be accountable for the taxes that the Friends have. Well, like he said, well, his statement meaning there are, there are several ways to look at this tax liability, and they're going to review it and bring it back to um, the meeting on January to decide what, how they're going to move forward. So that would imply that as well, yes. Not necessarily. I would think that the friends either pay it or don't pay it or throw themselves on the mercy of the courts or whatever. But specifically looking to have the library pay the tax rather than the friends would be a negative impact obviously on our financials here. And it, it would just seem to not make sense if the Correct. friends got the taxes Absolutely. and then turned around and asked someone else to pay, pay the, the taxes, taxes for them would, would really not make sense. For a but sale that they keep. For, yes. for money that they didn't earn to begin with. But anyway. Anyway, um, just okay. I think it's something that the board needs to know. Okay. All right, so Thank you. that was the friends. Uh, legislation? Uh, the thing that the um, legislature, the Illinois House, I believe it is, passed a property tax freeze, but the Senate did not get around to passing it before the window closed, so it is dead again. 
but they still anticipate people keep coming back. Okay, fine. Okay. Where it is now. Uh, nothing for Maria. I'll say that. Right. Okay, all right. Um, on our agenda, we have secretary's report. Uh, Dan, did you want to read that off? Oh, yes. Okay. A certified copy of Ordinance 17 07. An ordinance levying and assessing taxes of the Niles Main District Library, Cook County, Illinois. For the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017 and ending June 30, 2018. Along with a certified copy of a Truth in Taxation Certificate of Compliance was mailed to the Cook County Clerk on October 19, 2017. Okay, thank you. Good to know. Important to get that stuff done. All right. Okay, then moving on to new business. Um, do I hear a motion to approve resolution 17 02, which is a resolution to make additional employer contributions, which transfers 532000 to the Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund? Motion. Second. Okay, all right. Um, so we've talked about this already in the past and why we were going to do this. And, uh, intention to do this. Is there any further questions or comments on this uh, motion? I have a question on the explanation here, and I know this is going to end up in our minutes. Um, I, I'd like this sentence to be a little more descriptive. Um, actually, I copied it from the approval of the minutes we approved just in the beginning of this meeting. It says that um, the complete sentences, because it doesn't say what it's for. Approve 1702 a resolution to make additional employer contributions, which transfers 532000 to the Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund for the unfunded amount um, at the end of the calendar year. So now we know exactly what the purpose of this 532000 is, which is exactly what was stated in the minutes we approved. Instead of we're just sending, we're just paying $532,000 to IMRF. This is to cover... But, but unfunded liability. Right, at the end of the calendar year. Is that correct, at the end of the calendar year? Well, that, I just took it off Greg's wording from the minutes we just approved. So if we look at the minutes we just approved, I think it's the second page. I just copied it. It's page 7. But if you look on the bottom of page uh, 49, uh, the resolution itself, uh, which is uh, uh, the companion piece to mm -hmm. the, the motion sheet, mm -hmm. uh, it does say uh, to reduce its unfunded liability. So I'm just concerned that it, those words end up in the minutes, and I don't know where to put them. Well, I guess, first of all, I want to make sure that that's accurate. Is it at the end of the calendar year, as of December 31st, It was 2017? It was, it was calculated... Uh, the $532,000, if you remember from Judy's presentation, was calculated as of the end of 2016. Okay. Okay. So, uh, throughout 2017, um, we'll have incurred and paid uh, what's referred to as normal costs. Okay, so we should be pretty even on that. And um, the only thing that's not accounted for is the performance of the uh, portfolio, which is about $40 million, and what does the interest rate look like? Is it above 7.5% or is it below 7.5%, which may have an impact on this. Obviously, if it's right at 7.5%, the 532 will pretty much hold. But if it's higher than 7.5%, uh, at December 31st, if um, we may be a little bit overfunded. If it's under 7.5%, we may still be a little bit underfunded, but not by a significant amount. Okay, so the 532000 was our underfunded level as of December 31st of 2016? That's correct. Okay. Um, so, all right. Um, you didn't make the motion, but I don't know if they move it in the second to uh, amend their motion to say that that transfers 532000 to the IMRF fund as uh, to reduce its unfunded liability as of December 31st of 2016. Uh, that appears to be correct. Right. Just, I right. have no fun. Just um, yeah. with that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, uh, any other questions? 
for comments. I have an IMR question about funding. There was an amount that um, the auditor mentioned, 200 and some thousand, um, that's unpaid, it's sort of hanging out. Do you know what that's for and when do we need to pay that? The deferred outflows. That was that what she called? It, it was something that we need to pay. It was considered a, a debt. It, I understand what you're talking about, but she said it depended on the employees. And was it there? That's a different thing. It was the there last was line of her place. report. And I asked, oh, what does this mean? And, uh, and she said it was. She explained as, as if it was an amount we need to pay. I'm just wondering when will we throw that into our budget to take care of it. Um, well, if you, okay, so um, the key amount that you have to focus on is the uh, unfunded liability. Okay. Which is five hundred thirty-two thousand five hundred nine. Um, and. You know, you have to understand. That these You're numbers, correct. I apologize. Deferred outflow. Okay. Thank you. Part of the part of that five hundred thirty-two thousand dollars is the deferred outflow. But the key is, I mean, what the tab is is the five hundred thirty-two thousand. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I just wanted to know what 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 happens to that. But that's another. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. I'm done. Yeah. So, um, uh, I don't think we voted on this yet, so if we could have a roll call, please. Uh, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Danny? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to item B then, which is a resolution to cast a ballot in the IMRF trustee election uh, in favor of candidate Tom Keene. Um, well, they think there's a little typo. There's a typo there. Right. So the, the real candidate is Mr. Tom Keener. How are you? Keener? I'm not sure. Keener? Alright. Um, so, uh, presumably, as a member of IMRF, we have a right to cast a ballot in favor of some trustee. And this is the one that's been recommended by um, the staff. Um, in terms of qualifications. Um, do I have a motion to adapt this resolution to cast a ballot for him? Motion. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, fine. Any questions or comments? Who is he? I don't know. Not only that, but no. he is, there's, a, there's, a, there's a little. Well, that's in the not. Bio. Okay. I didn't think that we were due to to vote for somebody for the library board. So when I saw this, I'm like, what the heck is it? Oh, oh no, this is for the IMRF trustee. Oh, for the IMRF trustee. Never mind. I remember yeah. reading that. I'm still thinking about the other stuff I was reading before. Yes. That's okay. Everything. No problem. Okay. All right, uh, can I roll call? Karen? Yes. Karen? I think I'm going to abstain. Uh, Diane? Yes. Daddy? Uh, yeah. Linda? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, that passes when we turn to C. Um, so, maybe we could talk about this just a little bit. Um, our meetings uh, are, uh, we set them forth in an ordinance every year for the coming year, um, what the dates will be. These are our regular meetings, which we publish so the public will know ahead of time when we're meeting, and of course we'll know ahead of time when we're meeting. And obviously we usually meet the third Wednesday of the month, uh, but it's been pointed out to us that um, were we to do that in March, our staff and we, would miss the Illinois Public Library Association conference, or at least part of it, uh, were we to hold our library meeting that particular week. So if we move it up a week, um, neither we nor our staff will, will miss the, the conference. So that's one suggested change. 
the other, I don't know if this is a problem, our meeting in, uh, uh, next month is uh, December 20th. But I, oh, okay. Didn't we talk about that there months ago? Mm -hmm. yes, oh, you see, you still know, got a few are listed. Well, well I had a question. Okay. We need to handle that as formally as we're handling this March one. Do we need to? I'm sorry, the, there is a mistake on the listing here. I'm not sure if we're correct in that actually had been changed. Yeah, we just changed. Mm -hmm. yeah, what what is the change? Yeah, the ordinance was for December 13th, right? December 13th. Yeah, December 13th. I don't know so how that is. This is right. Um, Darn it. Oh, there. So when are we meeting next month? I think it's the 13th. Yeah, I've already had it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I think last month, or last time we talked about this, we moved it in a rather informal way. But once a year, no, but relatively informal, because once a year we have to set forth the dates for the upcoming year. I think that's what we're supposed to do. Oh, and that's what we're doing tonight. Isn't that right? When well, you already did it, and then we want to make a change to it. And the December 20th already was changed, and Diana said she thinks she didn't say that on her original so that the old date got picked up. Oh, no, that's okay. My but question yeah. was, we didn't oh, no. sign any, like, this is so formal, and we didn't do it for that. Is no, that it, it, it was in the ordinance, yeah, it's just that you, you wouldn't. All right, Probably that's fine. As long as it's okay, I just thought we missed yeah. it. All right. Okay. Um, so, does anyone have any problem with moving it for the, the uh, March one? The March one. Yeah. I won't be able to make it. I know that. I don't have a Which problem with it. The March 14th. We talked about this we'll before. We just brought it up again. That I we, can't go. We have the battle of the books it very often that we're it? No, continually bumping up against that as far as. Well, that's, uh, th that's yeah. just this time here. So in March, it won't. That would be a good point. Well, but you're saying it's a problem for other nights. Yes. Uh, yeah, it just seems to me we should. And there's a parking problem. Yes, yeah. right. I'm looking for the parking. Or window was down Good point. We should be thinkers. Yeah. It's like going to a Bulls game or something. Yeah. yeah. This is Oh, that's true. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we can move on this. But oh, one of us got to have a little bit. Well, yeah, but I, I, you know, I mean, well, Let's just spend a little time discussing it. So are you, are you saying that it might be better to have a different night of the week or something? Uh -huh. Is that what you're Either suggesting? Either a different night of the week or a different, yeah, yeah, basically a different night. Mm -hmm. I would address the problem, right, since we're having been on the books on Wednesdays. Yeah, although you'd need to do that, like, for the next set of meetings because everything's booked right now, but there are all sorts of programs and things like that booked yeah. into those spaces, and I'm sure I know I have Tuesday night meetings. Well, I'm, I'm not suggesting we change it immediately, yeah, but just like, looking into the future, it, it, it it or it could be a Thursday problem in the past. Hmm? I said Tuesday or Thursday, as long as it's not Wednesday, right? Well, we're, Susan's saying that at this point it's difficult to make that change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that and I understand. Yeah. Would it be um, uh, selfish to ask that so many parking spaces be blocked when we have a board? We certainly could do that. That yeah. would be an option as well. You know, that's a good idea. You know, I mean, it's only VIP. once a month, right? Well, you are VIP. So. No, no, I feel like we're here for the taxpayers. <laughs> get out of the way. I'm going to try to get it. Here we see the little cord. Can I get some decaf coffee then? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or do we just have the, uh, you know, guy who comes to the car and parks it for us? Oh, yeah. Let me take it to the <laughs> car. Okay. Okay. There we go, Dave. <laughs> Yeah, we'll go all the way. Well, we go for the middle. Yeah. You know, even if it was in any place. Yeah. Sure. Okay, well, for next month, how about we sure. will put some parking spaces aside for the trustees. Sure. Dave will handle that, and then we can look at the rest of the schedule later. Okay. Sure. Okay. Thanks. If you don't mind parking in the back. No, oh, no. That's yeah, fine. Oh, where? You mean on uh, Stoke Heath? On the staff side, on the east side. Okay. We can get yeah. you to the back door. 13th for next month. Then. 13th. Then. Oh, and then. For the bringing it from the back side. Then we'll change it. Bring it to the back. The back. Okay, so for now, uh, I made a motion to uh, approve resolution 1704, which is. Oh, sorry, we have to change that. That's. Uh, all right, great, right, sorry. Uh, Dennis Walsh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm doing it wrong. Okay, what are we doing? I, I have a motion <laughs> to approve ordinance 17 08, which is an ordinance modifying ordinance 1703. Oregon setting the schedule of meetings of the Board of Library Trustees of the Niles Main District Library 
for the fiscal year, commencing July 1st, 2017, and ending July 30th, June, June 30th, 2018. And the new schedule would be as set forth on page 57, except that the December meeting is actually December 13th. Mm -hmm. Do you have December a motion to that effect? 15. I make a motion. What, okay. Wasn't Second. it? No, but that was approved for the 13th. I know, but what it's, I said. No. This, oh, this, can, can I ask a question here? Yeah. I'll second it so I can ask my question. I think it was second already, but you go ahead and ask your question. Thank you. Um, I thought we were also going to be discussing changing the March date. It, it, it is Did changed on page 57. Okay, I'm just saying, right. this doesn't just count December, it also counts the March. I wanted to okay. test. Fine, thank you. Okay, so um, does anyone Thank have any you. questions or comments? No, I. they were answered. Thank you. Okay, all right, fine. Who may have a roll call? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Ted? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. That passes. Uh, and then we turn to uh, item D which is a uh, budget planning discussion. Now, this is the item which you would ask to be placed on our agenda for this evening, uh, planning our uh, budget for the future. So, um, you know, just to get us started off, I'll uh, turn to our staff and ask you, you can just sort of briefly explain to us how our, what the budget planning purpose is that leads up to the budget book which we ultimately receive before we vote on the budget itself. <laughs> yeah, it's a several month process. Um, Greg and I each have people that we supervise and we meet quite a bit with them. We start talking about it several months in advance. We actually meet with them weekly, so we have an ongoing discussion with them about staffing levels and things like that. But um, we meet with them, they start firming up what kinds of programs they think they want to be offering. Uh, they let us know about their staffing needs. They um, let us know about any furniture or equipment needs that might be coming up. Um, and so uh, eventually they firm up their plans and then we have a round of meetings with all each supervisor in turn where we kind of start looking at everything together. And so that's it. I, I mentioned all that because, you know, I know that the major part of our budget is staffing. Um, it's not, that is always going to be the case. There's no way for it not to be it, um, unless we just decide to make it a book warehouse that's not got services. But the board historically has been in favor of services and we have a number of services that we offer and programs and people to visit the schools and do all of the things that we have committed to doing over the years. So we can't really do zero-based budgeting here. We can't just throw out the idea of we're not going to have any programs, we're not going to buy any books, because from the very beginning we have established programs, we have staff that carry out those programs, and we have um, utility bills in the building that we have to maintain. There can never be a point where we're just zero. But we do start, to, you know, any position that comes up open is evaluated for whether it needs to be rehired, and we are constantly looking at ways to do things better and more efficiently. And I'm going to ask Greg to talk about all of the pieces of the budget that he handles, which is most of it. So I, th I thought I would um, give a little bit of a historical perspective. Um, these are the last four budgets, uh, four years budgets that we've, uh, that we've presented to the board. Um, the reason that there's only two binders is because uh, for 2014-15 and 15-16, um, a previous board only required us to put together these four or five pages, okay, relatively, um, relatively uh, skinny. So but that we, was before I was on the board? That's correct. Um, so the last two years, what we've done is we've put together, we put together something uh, that has a little more meat on the bone, and what we've tried to do is uh, provide all of the analytics as well as the plan in, um, uh, in a text basis, uh, show, uh, determine, excuse me, predicting what kinds of programs we're going to have, what kind of major programs we're going to have, um, as well as um, a number of uh, uh, different uh, analytics that show you trends over 
the last five or seven years, um, however wide the page is actually, so that we can uh, uh, actually have a productive conversation about the uh, budget. It's not that we just started doing this stuff. We've always done it. We have to do it in order to produce numbers. But um, the, uh, the amount of uh, information that was uh, delivered to the board was in a very uh, slimmed down format. Uh, Is there any reason for that? I think it was uh, the style of the uh, board president and the appetite for the board at the time for the type of information. Are we talking so, about um, Morgan Dugan as president? Uh, I think he was president during uh, the 14, 15, 15, uh, uh, 16 budget cycle. Well, when Morgan was president, he requested specific information yeah, in that's detail. What this is. Well, that's what this so, no, is. prior to even the board meeting. And when we reviewed the budget, there was a closer view at um, explaining the, the line items in detail. So it, it wasn't really cut and dry. And that's her opinion. No, okay, I stand so, here. So, <laughs> so did I. just historically speaking, was that <laughs> consistent with what had been going on for several years before that? Uh, I don't know. Right, right, because you were here years. at the time. Is that right? Okay, all right, years. fine, that's fair. Uh, could have been cocktail napkins before, but I don't know. <laughs> oh, sorry. But I, I kind of know that. Um, anyway, uh, the uh, departments that report to me, uh, marketing, uh, maintenance, IT, um, and patron services, we look at the types of uh, maintenance issues that are uh, creeping up on us. A lot of those are accounted for already in the uh, Special Reserve Fund. Uh, Dave and I have a constant, ongoing um, conversation throughout the year, not just at, uh, at budget time determining, uh, to determine the timing of specific uh, projects around the building. Uh, as, as an example, most recently we reported that we need to caulk the building. We also need to paint the building. And we also need to uh, replace the chiller on top of the building. Uh, all of these things were contemplated in the, uh, in the Special Reserve Fund uh, two or three years ago. Uh, as far as uh, marketing is concerned, we look at uh, the types of uh, supply needs that they have in terms of uh, running programs or uh, putting, putting uh, advertising out uh, in order to uh, support programs like um, the one that just happened this uh, past weekend, Vapor uh, uh, Fest. So what kind of brochures are you looking for? What kind of collateral materials do you need to hand out in order to make it a, a, a success that it was? Uh, when, when we look at IT, we look at uh, very carefully a list of uh, items to consider uh, around software renewals. Software doesn't renew every year. Um, Adobe, for example, has a two-year cycle. The uh, uh, 3M, or now Bibliotech, Bibliotech uh, has a uh, five-year cycle for the uh, sorter. So when we bought the sorter as part of the original, um, well, as part of the renovation, and installed it, the original purchase price included five years of maintenance. Um, that's coming up, you know, that's coming up due. And when it does come due, it'll be a pretty significant uh, uh, cost. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, it was, was it 50, 50 a year? I think it's a lot. 50,000? Yeah. Um, but I, I may be overstating that. I'm trying to pull it from memory. Uh, no, you know what? It was uh, 30 per year uh, because uh, the sorter was approximately half a million dollars, 150 of which was maintenance, and 350 was the original uh, installation. So, um, you know, we look at those types of things and schedule them out to make sure that, you know, first of all, uh, there's a continuing need for the software. You know, the financial software, yes, there's a continuing need for the financial software to produce financial reports. The uh, server software, yes, there's a continuing need for, you know, people to be able to check their books out, to self-check, and all the transactions that are handled through, uh, through that story. Um, uh, we look for licenses where we can cut back, or licenses where we can uh, try to get a better price or, or do some sort of other strategy, maybe put it up in the cloud. Uh, we just recently uh, put uh, uh, Outlook in the cloud and basically brought our costs down to zero. 
and uh, we don't have to maintain the back end, which is maintained in one of the Microsoft uh, facilities somewhere out there, you know, beyond our, you know, beyond our borders. Um, what am I giving you up? I don't know, but Tim has to leave at nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, we talk about those things. We look at them. We compare them to previous years. We make sure that things are, um, you know, things uh, uh, expenses uh, show a real need, or satisfy a real need, so that uh, we're not over maintaining or under maintaining uh, the various assets around the uh, uh, around the building and the various departments that we maintain a. Uh, uh, customer service letter level that keeps the patrons happy. So that's uh, that's what we do. We do it through a series of meetings, and uh, and then we present it to the board in, in one of these uh, factors. And we genuinely do try to give you all of the information that you might, we think that you might need. And if there's ever anything else that you think you might need, we do try to present it. So but you did have information here about all the programs we had anticipated and. There's, and all of the big things that were going on, and there's also a look back at the previous year, too, so you can kind of see how you think we did. You know, what did, did we do good things with the previous year's budget? So, you know, it is really our attempt to give you everything that you can need. And we'll be interested to hear what other sorts of information you think might be helpful. So, well, Tim needs to leave in five minutes. No, 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 just don't. He, he didn't say that we have to stop the meeting, right? right? Uh, oh, just, okay. just to leave, so, yeah. so does anyone else have any input about needing or not needing a process for our budget? Am I the only one who has any yeah. input? You're the one who wanted this on the uh, agenda tonight, so I, I want to turn to you now and ask Oh, about, absolutely. You know, but I just want to make sure I'm clear. It sounds like no one else thinks we need to adjust our or create a budget process. Are we all fine with the well, binder? I think we do have a budget process. And evidenced by this, this binder that we okay. get right here. All right, then I'll continue. All right, according to the library, our budget process is a binder. And um, for most of you who probably don't have to create budgets, that's not a budget process. It is a, in the beginning, there's a half a dozen pages where Susan sort of writes a synopsis about everything that happens in the library. I'm asking for a budget process where we do receive specific information about key categories and then based on that information we're able to connect the results or outcomes with what we do. And if you look at a budget, for example the village's budget, you will um, be able to understand more clearly what data is submitted by departments I thought last year when Greg mentioned operational budgets or what he received from his departments, I thought that would be key for us to look at. So I requested them, but I couldn't get them, so I foiled the request. I couldn't get them then, we hired, you hired the attorney to say they weren't certified. So it became a battle. Well, back to what a budget process is. The meetings that you have with your departments should all be in some sort of format in writing with objectives showing last year's accomplishments, which we, the board, then get copies of, and you explain that to us as we review it. Based on that information, which is called, uh, there's, there's performance measures, there's effectiveness that's linked with expenditures and budget processes, all of this is connected. And it's not really complicated, but it's in writing. Every time we have a budget meeting, Greg gives us a presentation. Last year he told us he starts from the bottom, and he considers what he thinks the, is it the taxpayers are looking at, and considers aspirations. Now, these are not factual information pieces. These are just opinions. I'm asking to be able, after I get a budget from you, to look at these different departments and be able to identify what's going on. Can you elaborate on what those key okay. metrics are? Um, we should have um, a performance measurement of costs and outcomes. What do you mean by that? Okay. Performance measurement, that could be staffing. We have 
first of all, you should have each department submit a budget. We should be able to say this department, based on this budget, does this all year long. It includes what staff do. Maybe they, maybe this is the department who's responsible for all these deliveries. So we'll finally find out what the deliveries are that are being done, what does it entail, what the purchases are made to create whatever they do in that department, and it, it's, it's all systematic. And we'll be able to take that information and evaluate them. I would love to sit down, now is not the time to try to just shoot this out, and show you formats that I'm talking about. And it, it has to be the information you already receive. Although I will admit I was a little surprised when I was going through your copies. I noticed our purchase orders are handwritten, and every time I ask for information, I get a stack of paper. It almost makes me feel like we don't have any, we don't use technology to create reports, to analyze processes. Like, we don't put information in a computer and get reports based on all that we do here. It's like we're always looking through file cabinets, making all these copies. I mean, it's, there's no process. How do you evaluate anything? Just like I asked for um, the FanFest information. That was like pulling teeth, but there was no record of exactly what that event entailed with an outcome. Just a bunch of paper thrown together. And we assume $5, I think you think, it'll cost next year. But there's no data. There's no evidence every every decision. It's just, we talked about it. There can't be a budget. And I've also noticed from 2015 to now, some of your department supervisors keep buying the same thing over and over again. Have we not determined if we don't need that much? Or Can you give me an example? Just items, mostly for different programs. I have all these copies from 2015 for, well, what month is this? It's October, so for the, maybe three months ago, I happened to notice I had 2015's, I don't know, expenses or something. And then I looked at your, your checks here, and they were identical. The same person goes to the same place and buys. So I'm trying to figure out how do we evaluate this? We haven't even changed in two years. I don't know what's wrong with that necessarily. Well, I'm trying to figure out why are all these pieces of papers thrown together? I can't get a report about a, progress, a program. I can't get a report based on staffing in a department, what they do. We couldn't even figure out what's going on with this uh, selling of books. We could not get an explanation of the process that these staff people go through. We did get an explanation. No, she told me I didn't need it. I asked for three months. And for three months, first she pointed to some supervisors okay, I'm sitting sorry, here. Okay, Carolyn, can, can, we get, can we go to specific things that you require? Okay, Rather I would than like, a history of things that have happened in the past. Okay, well what I'm saying is we don't have any type of procedures in place. And I think if we want to mirror anyone, maybe we should consider the village. Right, well, why don't, Carolyn, why, don't, why don't you maybe provide us with some samples of yeah. Actually, I'll tell you what, is, there's uh, also an organization. Let, let, let me just finish. Why don't you, Carolyn, provide us with copies of samples that, that you think um, are good examples of how we should be doing things? I think it's a great idea. Yeah. All right. I, I don't know what to bring them. Okay, well, we didn't expect yeah. you to bring them, but, you know. Well, no, I just figured nobody really was, well, I didn't even no, think If you've got about this it. idea, that's not true. bring it forward and let us see it. It might be a good thing to go with. And then just another key, there's also organizations we could be members of that okay. um, a lot of governmental Wait. agencies participate, and it creates a bond between the agency and the um, taxpayers to where they feel they're part of the plan. Not that they're going to tell us what to do, but it's a whole framework. And other well, that sounds like a good idea to me. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a certain uh, organization you have in mind? Or? Well, I have a couple at home. Like I said, I didn't know how detailed we'd get, but I, have, I can bring you examples of what would be part of could we a put budget process in the budget or in the uh, agenda for next month for sure. you to bring that stuff forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Because I, I think we would be interested in organizations Definitely. that yeah. uh, allow us to in some way communicate better with our taxpayers or things like that. I, I don't know which ones they are, but you know there may be some good organizations out there that would be worthwhile. 
So yeah, I think we'd like to look at that. And if you have any other samples of what other government bodies do, sure. that uh, I think we're always open to looking at other bodies, whether or not it you know, worked for us or not, I don't know, but I, we'd but be looking can I to look at samples. One mm -hmm. other question. Mm -hmm. um, it came up with, um, Baby time. No information that we have that um because that's all something we have to go after. No, we have a report and it's information. Oh, was it about um oh when you renew the books? Okay. Susan. Oh that gives you okay, this software that you use gives you um the total of um Whatever our communication, whatever, whatever that word is, circulation. Okay, so you get a total for circulation. Well, I mean, it's broke. I can, I get broken out which things are renewals and which things are original circulations. But what I cannot tell you is which people would not renew that item anyway. All right, that wasn't the example. Darn it. Okay, I was going to bring up something where you get information in a program, and I was going to ask you, can we take that information and somehow? I don't know, adapt your program to give us another report. No, I can't remember what We have no control over our integrated library system. That's, we have a plethora of reports that we can pull, but it can only pull what it can pull. Well, that, because that's a specific software. Yes. But in general, I mean, you must have a lot of technology that you use to keep all this information about everything you do. I, I'm thinking that would help to uh, create reports as well. well. I think we need examples of the yeah, reports. Yeah, I know, I can't add one. All right, I'll, so I'll bring it to the next one. Because it's hard to talk about it. Yeah, 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 and, and as I'm just looking through, because I'm just going to use this as my Bible right now. What, what, is Illinois, that, what is you looking at? The Illinois Public Library Trustee Manual. Okay. And it has a whole section on budget in here and what you should do and how you should manage your budget and how, what what should be your priorities. And um, as I'm reading the whole, it's a couple pages worth, and as I'm reading, it always says make sure it reflects your mission. So we should always be looking at our mission to make sure that we, we are spending our budget to make sure that we are telling the truth, that that is really what our goals are and that is what we are what we are presenting and spending our money for for our community because we decided that that's what, what's important for our community. And then also to um, mirror our strategic plan. So that too, and make sure that we have an updated strategic plan, which we do, so we always have to, that is also our driving our budget. Correct. So. Those are the two things, as I'll just pull out, those are the main things. So I just want to say, yeah, however, we, however, we manage, no, 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 however we manage our budget, we can't forget mm -hmm. why we're here. You're right. It's for our mission and our, in our strategic plan. But my goal is not to change that. My goal is to get structured information so we can have a better view of exactly what's going on. You still make the decisions the way you make them. I just would like to see a lot more information distributed in a completely more structured form. Bring those okay. examples in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So, um, so I'm, I'm for it if we get the examples that they All right. can work for. Alright. I, I did want to ask you again, uh, the document you're reading for, do we, do we all have that? Do we all it's available copy? online. And okay. Part, part of um, oh, it, yeah. the thing that you all agreed to back last May, the uh, trustee conduct rules came from that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Okay. But they, There's just a really... Uh, Great information here, just to always ground you. Uh -huh. It sounds you know, great. Um, it's on the state librarian site. Like, okay, so could we trouble you? I know it's a sort of testy thing to do, but could you send us a link to oh, that? Oh, sure, sure. To that, just so that yeah. we'll, we'll remember to do yeah, it. It makes and life it'll, easier. It'll yeah. just, yeah. We'll Thank be more you. likely to do that, too. Yeah, because get to that I day. would assume, what was the name of it? Yeah. The Illinois Public Library Trustee Manual from 2016. Okay. Well, Created also, by the Illinois State Library. Uh, this Is that in here too? Yeah, uh, it's uh, uh, looks like chapter ten. 
Oh. Uh, budgeting and financial management. Oh, great. Uh, well, we don't have to read chapter 10 yet, right? Well, <laughs> well uh, yeah, we're only going you know, to page 26. Maybe that's later. <laughs> uh, looks like it starts on uh, page 54 uh, or 53. Oh, uh, see, that's. Okay. That's in three months. <laughs> Okay. All right. Lots of information. All right. Does anyone else um, want to make any comments or ask any questions regarding our budgeting process? Just that uh, as we look to the future of it, uh, we are aware of the dates that we're talking about because we do want to have specific meetings where we're going over these line items. Right? Yes. And I, I think, Carolyn, you had said before you felt we didn't have enough of those meetings. But so let's look at our calendar and make sure that we have enough of those meetings. If, if, we, our, right. if we don't, we have certain deadlines we have to meet too. So right. we have to make right. sure our meetings are prior to those deadlines. Right. Right. So Carolyn, maybe if you can look at the calendar, if, if, if there, you need, think we need to have any changes in there as well, that'd be great. Oh, you mean add a budget meeting? Yeah. 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 Okay, well, let's, let's see what you think about what I think we want her to do. Sure. Sounds good? All right, good. Okay. okay. All right, fine. Um, let's move on to our next item, unfinished business. Uh, we have a little, this is number 12 on our agenda, we have a little mopping up to do. We did discuss and came to a distinction regarding uh, unsupervised or unattended children in the library. Apparently, since then, um, our uh, council um, had some uh, suggested changes this is from Dennis Walsh. You'll see these on page 59. I don't really think they changed the substance of uh, what our policy is, but it sort of gives the public some disclaimers. Basically, we're not responsible for your children, uh, is what it's saying. Um, but ah. uh, but um, this uh, is probably, probably a good cleanup of our uh, policy. Uh, regarding unattended children. So, um, do I have a motion then to approve the revision of administrative policy 3.11 unattended children as indicated on page 59? So, motion. Second. Any discussion or questions? Uh, Do I need a roll call? Uh, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diana. Yes. Ready? Yes. Linda. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Any other matters that um, anyone like to discuss? Okay. Okay. We all get a the, the district this letter. Yes. Library column. The, 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 they want to annex. Uh, oh. Portion of our are we in other now? You know, uh, this, yeah, yeah. no, actually, okay. yeah, we're in other now, and uh, Tim was just mentioning this letter, which is in our packet, yeah. regarding the annexation of the city of Des Plaines. That wouldn't really affect us, though, because uh, it's the library district's boundary would not be changing, right? Are they in our you library district? That's why I got it. Is this, aren't we, Let's isn't part of our that. district a little bit of Des Plaines? I think we got it because they're in our library district. No, I think that was addressed. Um, okay. To I mean, I would think so. Was the mail. No? I just assumed you guys had seen that too. Well, it was in an envelope in our they, packet. They're declaring yeah. war on us. Well, but I, I, don't worry. I, I, I think they're just required to give us notice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not yeah. our yeah. interest, though. It's saying on River Road or something. Oh, they're in this thing where they are. Are they in our library? That's, yeah. That's my assumption. Was what did I think it would be? Well, that must be what it means. Yeah, right. it must be what it's worth. Take a portion of our... Oh, you and then, that 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 know, like, what are these, like, doctrine hospital buildings or something? I don't know. Because it's just taking all that money. No, actually, I have these two for other... Yeah, here they just do it. It sounds like they just they could just do it. All right. Okay. So let's go back for next. So um, it, you know, it appears to me that they're just the next thing. What is probably unincorporated area. Oh, is it true? But, but that doesn't. But so what? I mean, that doesn't. We lose our, money. Like, well, I don't know. Why would we lose some residents? Because the unincorporated area has lots of people in it. Yes, they're not they taking our library district. They have to pay. Yes, but they have to pay individual and the other corporate. 
Are you saying that the I Village of the Springs has... I'm assuming oh. the Village of the Springs wants to annex part of the Niles Library District. Yes. Yeah, they are. I so they're they're they take it to money and we don't. Out of our district. But is the, does the Village of Niles run their... Not I mean, wait a minute. Does the City of the Springs run their library? They have no, no, no. Any the city of Displains runs the library for the city of Displains. We are the only district library, so oh, we take okay. in all of the unincorporated areas. And there are a few areas that do not have any library service. Okay, so it would take library or it would take, not just village. It would be taken away. Yeah. I don't remember those. Well, we'll have time. I don't know. I can answer that question though. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> I'll give you my copy. Oh, thank you. Isn't that interesting? You shouldn't have a No, it's... No, you're right. the elected officials. Right, so... Oh, uh, okay. But then for other... So I wanted to ask, just go back to this. The letter of uh, library oh. district calendar. Could we yes. discuss this? That's what I thought. I knew you guys had That's what that. I thought you were talking about. about the the too. We get that every year. Do we? Because I don't remember seeing all this. Well, I mean, we get it here every year. I don't know that I have to want to every year, but it's okay. uh, just all of the legal deadlines um, broken out into two different documents. One is the, specifically the budget and levy, and the yeah, other one is just all the other deadlines. So there's actually two documents? Yeah. I just saw there's tons. So any, are any of these dates important to us? I mean, did you give this to us for yes, I just it's just an FYI. Like okay. if you're talking about the budget discussion, you can look at that to see. But it's real confusing because what they combine a lot of things. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. And since he was asking for us to get the meetings in a timely fashion. All right. Well, can, can we get back to other to uh, talk about this affidavit? To uh, what if anything do we want our staff to do about this? Do we want them to handle the withdrawals and say, is this uh, likely to affect our tax revenue? It looks like there are parcels here about, I don't know, eight or nine parcels that the village or city of Displays intends to annex from what is probably an unincorporated area right now which may take it out of our library district. And, well, and it, the village itself or the town itself is taking this? So well, they, it's the they city want, of displays. Yes, so they, if they take it, since they're in charge of their library, they would become, they would become part of the displays public library. Yeah. Yeah. We would lose those people. I think it's just losing tax dollars is our problem. Well, maybe, maybe not, because it's a, if it's unincorporated, they're not paying. No, they are. But still, they're still in our district. Half of our district is unincorporated incorporated. taxpayers. But I thought yeah. unincorporated meant you weren't paying. No, no, no it means they're not paying. So, do you no, no, no. a map here? Well, I want a Google map. I want to see it. Industrial. Well, some of them are not all of them. You know what? I got a document from the CMAP people, and I can send that out to you, and it has a lot of background information. Yes, because we have some that go to my school. So, therefore, for them to but uh, members or to have a library card in displays, we have to, because these are kids that are financially at their needs, we have to pay a quite a large fee. Yeah, those are the ones that are unserved altogether. Yeah, the unserved, yeah, we have we as a school pay for the library. Well, I don't know if she's that. Yeah, I think they're doing right now just to see if they can tell us what kind of property it is. This would be interesting. Well, you see, it's not, there's, it's not street. They have a lot of, I'm wondering if it's some of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of buildings right now, buildings right now, in the plains of residential buildings, like, all right, we, are, uh, we need to wrap this up. Uh, this uh, other topic is of interest, but we seem to need more information about it. And so um, with the uh, board's consent, I'm going to ask the staff to look into this further. And if necessary, to contact uh, Dennis Walsh to see if we can or should file an objection to this uh, proposed annexation. 
and if possible, to even estimate uh, what our tax losses would be if these parcels were to be annexed by the City of Des Plaines. Because uh, I think that's something that we would like to know. So, Question, uh, would eminent domain, you know, because of the... Uh, um, a town is taking it over? Would no, they get, I mean, this is the same thing. Eminent domain is when the town is actually owning the property, usually, or, or sometimes it's just an easement, though they're actually taking it to own it to, like, build a bridge or build a yeah. road or something like that. That's not it. They're, they're just annexing it into the village. So they're not owning it, they're just... They're just saying it's, it's, it's like when Niles limits. took over where right. Golf Mill is. Right, and yes. you know, there's a number of reasons this could be happening. One was pointed out, maybe right. it's developing, maybe the city of Des wants to capture what it sees as increasing assessed, uh, equalized assessed value within those boundaries. That might be one reason. Sometimes you see these where the residents, they're residents, and they actually want to be in a village because they think they're going to get additional services so there's multiple reasons why the residents might petition to be in but um, I can't tell from this alone who or why I don't know where, who's doing it. Part of the issue is in some areas because all of income and they needed a certain amount of income. You know, I wonder if it's Aniston. Yeah, displaying doesn't have that issue. It's empty. I wonder if it's so they could put the development plan in mind. Very likely. Very likely. Park Ridge also likes the market. I know for a fact because of Aniston. Be, be working in this place at the school, and we hear about a lot of that stuff. I know for a fact they're really pushing for their undeveloped land to be developed. So if they've got somebody who's interested and they're going to develop that, that might be part of it, like you said, trying to up their tax base, too, especially depending on what development's coming in. Well, um, we'd um, certainly, I think, be interested in finding out more information about this. If uh, the staff can uh, learn anything more before our next meeting, we'd, we'd like a report on that. Great. Okay, so I think that comes to the end of our agenda now. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Okay. Motion. Second. Okay. Um, Karen? Yes. Caroline? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Diane? Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much.